Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another very special podcast uh, with my friend uh, Toyo Harada. Um, seems like uh, you guys enjoyed the last time uh, we did this, and uh, so we're going to keep doing it every single week, uh, whether you like it or not. But anyways, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, this week we have a bunch of uh, new topics to talk about, um, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait to get started. So what I'm going to do here right now, I'm just going to give you a quick intro to Toyo Harada. He's a good friend of mine, also a YouTuber, also does daily podcasts and you know d daily stuff on the internet, just like I do. Um, we'll be talking more about, you know, stuff later, like uh, where you can find us and all that good stuff. But I know you guys, uh, your, your time is just as important as, uh, as ours and, uh, we don't want to be wasting any more of your time. So let's get into it. Okay. So, uh, Toyo, how you doing, brother? Good, man. Thanks for having me on again. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on as well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're having, we're having each other on. How's that? <laughs> yeah. So, uh. Yeah, there's a lot kind of going on this week. I don't know where you want to start. Mm. Well, it, it, there's so much going on right now. I'm actually enjoying some some whiskey, uh, you know, oh, to help nice. us uh, swallow all this stuff down. But I mean, we, we did uh, we we had a few things that we wanted to talk about. But I think let's uh, let's get started with um, the SARS outbreak. I mean, wait a minute. The what was uh, it? H H one N one. Wait, what, what was it called? Swine flu. The swine flu. Uh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> What, what are they calling it now? The, oh yeah, Black death. <laughs> the the what is it? The Modelo virus? Oh no, the coronavirus. That's right. I knew it was a beer. So uh, yeah, I'll let you get into it real quick, uh, since you guys, since you actually have a lot more, you know, uh, the nitty gritty information and all that stuff, and I'm more about the what is it? The the commentary? <laughs> no, no, but regardless, but yeah, yeah, go go ahead and uh, inform the crowd uh, out there that you know isn't informed yet, which I'm pretty sure everyone's already. Uh, on a fear level, oh, yeah. you know, fear this level 99. Everywhere. So go ahead. Everybody go. Um, has been talking about this. But, um, yeah, basically, whoever has been, like, counting all of the deaths and the different reported cases and suspected cases and all of that, they've figured out some, like, new way to calculate who might be infected. And uh, I actually, I just dropped a link to the Zero Hedge article in the Discord. But, um, yeah, basically, though, they have, like, a new metric on how they're counting it. And since they did that, the numbers have been exploding. And it's kind of scary because they're not, like, retroactively applying this new method. So, the like, if, if they were applying this the entire time, the, the amount of people infected would be in, like, the hundreds of thousands at this point, And they aren't going back to recalculate. So, moving forward, I guess we're going to see crazy spikes in the number of confirmed cases. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's actually looking like all of those weird projections that were coming out early on, how like there could be like hundreds of thousands of people infected by like the first week of February. It actually it's looking like that that actually is the case. And with this new way that they're they're calculating it, um, we're, we're going to start seeing this thing skyrocket. But so far, there's 100 or no, I'm sorry, 1486 deaths with 65,213 cases. Um, of Wuhan residents and um, yeah I don't know it's getting scary I think um, I know <laughs> you kind of think it's a lot of fear-mongering and stuff yeah but uh, <laughs> I do yeah. I do and, and I mean I, I'll just break it down to you like I mean my opinion and uh, we talked about this actually early in the morning like 12 hours ago <laughs> but uh, but basically yeah I actually have a little bit of a theory about this because like I heard somebody on uh, on uh, Twitter you know pretty much just mentioned the fact that like uh, how things are in China you know, just a quick reminder as to how things are in China. And uh, and so what do I mean by that? Well, you know, I don't want to get too um, graphic here, but basically nobody washes their hands in China. Everything is beyond disgusting, uh, putrid. Um, you know, people like, um, you know, for example, like um, I've seen videos, countless videos, you know, because I actually, you know, keep in touch with China stuff, but, you know, more for the economic uh, stuff, you know, um, that's why, I, you know, I stay abreast of what's happening over there. But yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, I've seen plenty of videos of like people literally taking, you know, shits on the street, you know, or having their kids, you know, you see, I've seen plenty of pictures, which is kind of crazy. Like you see like a parent that has a, a, a child that's about to take, you know, doing the number two and they just put, they just pull their pants down and they just put them like a, their butt in the trash can. You know what I mean? And it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like all kinds of stuff like that. Nobody washes their hands. You know, everything is beyond crazy polluted. As we already know, China is extremely polluted. Um, you know, nobody there um, 
uses any kind of like uh, hygiene of any kind. Um, and the thing is, it's like, um, you know, when, it, when the person started talking about it in that sense, you know, just in the typical, you know, um, how do I say this, you know, like, uh, damn it, like um, the, the most um, obvious reasons as to, you know, why this thing is spreading, you know, the fact that everybody there, um, especially in the major cities where this is happening is every, everybody lives like sardines, you know, like one, one on top of each other. Um, again, yeah. you know, the dirty, you know, the dirtiness of like the, you know, the environment, um, the food that they eat, the pollution within the food that they eat and just one thing after another, after another, after another. And then when you start like adding all that up, it's like, well, yeah, no fucking wonder. You know what I mean? That that shit is like beyond uncontrollable because if you look at all the neighboring areas of, uh, you know, where China, you know, of China, you know, meaning India, Hong Kong, you know, whatever, you know, yeah, they have a few coronavirus uh, incidents here and there, but they're contained really quickly. I mean, how about, I mean, India is literally right next door with a humongous population. And um, even though you see on, on TV all the time or, in, you know, on, on videos, uh, India being extremely crazy dirty as well, they're actually not, you know what I mean? They're, they're just living a very, you know, dirty environment for a lot of reasons. But, you know, a lot of them you actually practice, uh, you know, basic hygiene. You know, a lot of them, you know, they have things like sanitizer solution, uh, you know, uh, just, just just basic stuff like that. That um, And again, we know that the, the population of India, for example, is extremely well-educated and especially on things like this. So, you know, um, even the most, um, you know, run down uh, slum in Mumbai is uh, most likely, you know, probably a lot you know, uh, safer, um, you know, from, you know, you know, getting uh, sick and pathogens and all that stuff than, you know, just a regular old uh, neighborhood in, in China where, where these things are happening right now. So I really do think that a lot of people are not taking into into account these things. And they kind of are. Actually, as a matter of fact, I, I, I'm going to take that back because uh, earlier today, right, like an hour before we, we started recording, I was watching some other, you know, video talking about kind of like what's happening in China, you know, from a market perspective and the economy, how it's going to start affecting the t supply chain, blah, blah, blah. But basically, you know, they touched on exactly what I was just saying right now. And I'm like, well, yeah, good. It's about fucking time that people are, you know, what I mean, like, you know, you're just using that common sense stuff because, you know, again, they're trying to spread that virus here in the U.S., you know, meaning that, oh, um, <clears throat> five people just got hospitalized, you know, from with that uh, coronavirus in a Chicago hospital, you know, just, you know, like a story, hypothetical story. I'm not I forgot, you know, the, the exact <laughs> details of these stories. But, you know, basically it's like, oh, and they got accidentally released into the population. And it's like, you know, you know they're doing all kinds of shit like that all the time. And you're not seeing any massive, um, you know, outbreaks, any massive anything because. Again, you know, like even though, um, you know, things aren't great here in the U.S. or in other parts of the world, you know, again, when you just compare, you know, the, the health and hygiene, you know, to what we have here to what how things are in China, it's it's like night and day. And again, even here in Mexico, you know, I, I, it, again, coming from the U.S., you know, and then coming to here to Mexico for the first time, you know, about two years ago and seeing how, you know, things are dirty, you know, they're, they're not crazy dirty, but, you know, if you're out in the street and you're just like, uh, <clears throat> you know, out and about doing whatever, and all of a sudden you're like uh, gonna have lunch and you're gonna have tacos, your hands are really fucking dirty. Yet, you know, and, and people are very dirty because, you know, they work a lot of hard labor, you know, physical labor jobs, but yet you see people here that, you know, they, they go and they wash their hands, they use the hand sanitizer, they go above and beyond to make sure that they're not gonna get sick. And even when they do get sick, they, they put on the, you know, what is it, that, that, that thing over their mouth, you know, just like they do in Asia. So. You know, there's a lot of things like that that a lot of people around the world uh, practice and uh, we keep forgetting. And again, I don't want to be throwing China under the bus, but all this is pretty much well-known facts and you can look this up. You know, just any kind of like documentary video or any kind of, you know, real life video about how things are in China and your jaw will drop as to, you know, how these people live over there. It makes, it makes fucking Mumbai, India slums look like, uh, you know, like fucking Disney World and shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, so what do you think about that, Ben? Because honestly, that's what I think is really spreading and really, you know, having this stuff get out of control. Because again, if you look at things like the Black Plague, you know, how that shit got out of control, you know, in, um, in Europe, you know, back in the day. And again, how the Black Plague, Black Plague is again, you know, resurfacing in places like San Francisco, which are experiencing the same <laughs> kind of fucking environment. I mean, to me, it's like, I mean, come on, man. It's right in front of your face, people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, what do you I think? Mean, it it makes sense because like all those things they do take a toll on your immune system and then they're saying like the the main problem here 
is that like all of these people have weaker immune systems. So I guess like a lot of older people are dying from this coronavirus. And uh, and like also like I guess like really young anybody who doesn't have a good well, immune system. Well, well again, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I don't want to interrupt, but just like uh, when I was uh, studying, uh, you know, culinary whatever, and they teach you about um, you know diseases and like you know foodborne illnesses and cross contamination and all that shit. You know, basically they say that you know this is how it works. You know, not, like a good majority of the people, like you and me, we're fine. You know, we just get the runs or we get a cold <laughs> or whatever. But the, the people that are always at risk are always very, very young, like kids that don't their immune system are not developed. Or again, like you said, older people with their immune system are, you know, just shot They're already old. And those are the ones that always uh, not only get killed, but they get, you know, they get thrown into these massive numbers. And anyways, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, yeah. No, I honestly, it, it, it makes sense because like you were saying, just with all the pollution, all of those, you know, just not washing your hands all just the sanitary problems um that that would just take a, a gradual toll and if they've been living like that you know for a while you could see why now they're getting affected by this virus as easily as they are um and actually another thing that that's kind of interesting you were talking about the pollution um they're, they're trying to figure out exactly what's happening inside of china with the whole lockdown and the quarantines of all these like huge cities and they're actually looking at air pollution to try to figure out how much of these different cities are shut down and um i don't know I, I have another article from zero heads that's saying that there's three different cities that they're looking at that are under quarantine and they're trying to figure out exactly how much economic activity is happening and their air pollution right now is only between 20 to 50 percent of their historical averages so just kind of showing that like most of the city is still shut down um they're only like producing 20 to 50 percent of their pollution that they normally would on their day to day and i thought that was kind of interesting and in a, i don't know an intuitive way to try to figure out exactly what is happening economically in those areas yeah because yeah. that is that is a major problem and i know you talked about the crazy bailout that is happening inside of china with all of the money printing and um yeah i mean i i don't know yeah, yeah, but, but that's, a, that's a great point that you make because, again, you know, to me, I, I believe that all this is just a major psyop. You know, basically the fact that, you know, both the U.S. and China are like in and in, in, I'm, I'm doing the quotation marks in the air, you know, like they're at war, you know, meaning an economic war or whatever the fuck, trade war, all that shit. And this is all just part of that game, you know, meaning that by, you know, China sacrificing its people and putting this whole situation, you know, <clears throat> you know, out there in their own country they are, you know, taking this shit to the next level. You know, this is their version of uh, 911. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, and they don't care. You know what I mean? Like, you already know all, all, all these people are around the world, just like it happened in our country and, and all that shit. They don't care. And um, to them, you know, these are all just sacrificial lambs, you know, to the greater good of the, the country or whatever, you know, whoever, you know, whoever the hell they worship. But anyways, but the point is, is that, you know, Again, you know, like it, it's it's all these countries are in cahoots, meaning like this just stick to China and the U.S. right now. But China and the U.S. are both, you know, um, in cahoots, meaning that the people that run these countries, again, we've talked about this many, many times over, um, you know, again, not on this podcast per se. This is only episode two. <laughs> but um, but basically, you know, the fact that like, um, you know, the, the banking cartel, you know, the, the Rothschilds and others, you know, but let's just stick to them for now. You know, they're the ones that uh are running the show all around the world, just like they have for a very, very long time. And so, right, you know, just like they've said before, you know, this is their direct quote, they don't care who runs, you know, the countries, you know what I mean? They just, as long as they print the money, as long as they're yeah. in charge of that, they, they're the ones that are really in charge of everybody and everything. So, you know, right now, um, the American empire is on uh, its last leg. The dollar is, uh, you know, about the this you know get destroyed uh, any day now you know probably a few more years, but in in the process you know they, there needs to be a replacement and how, who's going to be the replacement? Well, we already know it's China, and so you know the banking cartel, the Rothschilds, and all that stuff they're already out there in China. They've been out there since Nixon, um, and um, yeah, they've already built their infrastructure. Um, as you guys can see, everyone can see China is already ready to take on the next century. Um, you know, be, uh, Xi, Jinping, Xi Jinping or whatever has said, you know, many times over the back when even when Obama was president, the fact that, um, you know, saying reminding the world that China um, was uh, has been, you know, the the what is it? The major power, you know, for the longest time, you know, what I mean, like uh, out of all empires, you know, and that they're going to take over, you know, they're going to take their their place back on top of the 
uh, on top of the throne, uh, you know, coming soon. And uh, this is going to be their century and so on and so forth. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, again, you know, right now, you know, um, if you look at a little bit of the history of the Rothschilds, you know, they were the ones that were basically the ones behind uh, the creation of the modern medicine and everything that has to do with modern medicine today. Um, so, you know, again, this falls in line with what's going on over there, you know, with the, the pathogen, you know, with, with uh, the coronavirus, you know, uh, you know, that's what they're going to use to, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to make this agenda happen, you know what I mean? Because, you know, they don't want like some sort of like, uh, you know, world war. I mean, they're, they're, you know, there's so many ways in which they can, you know, uh, push their narrative, you know, meaning that it doesn't have to be World War Three. It could just be a pandemic. You feel me? And, uh, yeah. you know, the pandemic doesn't have to breach the whole world. It can just, uh, you know, be in, in one part of the world. You know, in fact, uh, fuck it, let's put it in China, you know, which is, you know, the major cog in the economic wheel that is the, the planet right now. So if all of a sudden we put that whole country, you know, to a standstill and we blame it, you know, not on a president or anything like that, but we blame it on something that we couldn't control. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, some sort of uh, pathogen. Then all of a sudden, it's like where they have the perfect scapegoat, you know, so that when the economy falls, you know, all of the things that I talk about all the time, you know, why I tell you to buy gold and silver and Bitcoin and all this shit is because, again, that day is coming in which the whole thing is going to freeze up and it's going to just stop. And then what? What the fuck are you going to do? And so, you know, they got to they got to, you know, they can't just, uh, you know, this is, by the way, you know, it's not that they're using this as an excuse to stop the world economy. It's more like the world economy is already coming to a stop and they need, again, something as a scapegoat in order to be like, oh, this is the reason why. It has nothing to do with the shit that's been going on for over 100 years. It has nothing to do with the things that we're doing right now. It has nothing to do with the banks, you know. Uh, okay, no, no, no. It, it, it's all because of the coronavirus. And it's like, oh, really? You know what I mean? Like, really? You know? So, yeah. um, but, but a lot of people don't know the monetary history. A lot of people don't know what's really going on. A lot of people just don't know. And so um, they're very gullible and they believe this shit and they eat it, you know, just like cake. And, and again, it's very scary, you know, because I'm trying to be very optimistic and lighthearted about it. But don't be thinking that I'm not in the back of my mind also thinking like, fuck, bro, this could be the zombie apocalypse. You know what I mean? You know, like fucking, uh, I guess, uh, what the fuck was it? Resident Evil, you know, but. You know, by the way, when I say Resident Evil, I'm old, so I'm talking about the original PlayStation game. I'm not talking about any of the movies or anything, because my girlfriend, when I say Resident Evil, she's never heard of the original, my wife, I'm sorry, my wife. You know, she's never heard of the, the you know, the, the original game. She's too, just too young for that shit. So she's talking about the movies, and that's, anyway, so yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, that, that's actually interesting, though, like, looking for the scapegoat. And if, even if you think of like the the trade wars, like that was like round one because that already started having consequences over here. And even just like on the global scale, like in economies, uh, my brother works for a company. They assemble uh, like I don't know a bunch of different like drones and things like that. <laughs> but they they already started running into problems because of the trade war. And this is all before the coronavirus. You know what I mean? Broke out like this is months ago. Um, so so I imagine that's happening everywhere. Anywhere, oh, yeah. like, anywhere that's shipping in from China, that was like might have been the first wave of it, and then he could start pinning it. Oh, yeah. oh, it's the trade war, but now this, China's completely shut down. Everything's quarantined. Nothing's coming out of there. And um, I'm already seeing reports like the iPhones or or what is mm -hmm. it, the earbuds, those air buds whatever they're called yeah there's so many uh, industries being affected already and going to be affected moving on and this is not really going to have yeah like start so this could be the second wave of huh? like their whole build up mm -hmm. for for pinning it on china yeah. that is a good i mean it's it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna really be to like like late spring summer when we're really, really gonna start seeing the effects of uh shortages and again yeah. you know going back to like um again part of the the narrative the agenda you know this is all just um one big uh movie type of one big play that they're you know they, it's all perfectly calculated they already know what they're doing even though no one knows what's going on but again this is also like a big play so that you know again could be but we're, you know we'll see in a few months you know so that now all of a sudden there's a humongous reason to not have uh companies you know our own american companies or any kind of world company or anything like that you know manufacture things in china anymore but in fact bring it back to the u.s or bring it back to whatever country of origin and start manufacturing in those countries of origin again and uh and get out of china so, you know, this is all part of, uh, that could be part of that too. And again, even China, believe it or not, you know, a lot of these things, um, 
you know, even though it might not seem like it's, uh, you know, in their favor to, you know, lose some of these companies like Apple or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, they kind of want that too, because it's part of their control. And, um, you know, so like they would rather um, be in control of the corporations and the companies uh, within their own country and not have uh, foreign entities, you know, be in there, um, you know, dictating or anything at all. Like meaning even, even Google, you know, Google in order to do business, you know, with uh, China, they literally have to follow China's rules. And then China's like, Hey, these are the censorship that we want. And if you're going to be in, in our country it has to be this way. But if they can just avoid that altogether and just, you know, create their own uh, Baidu, right? Or, uh, you know what I mean? Or just take over a fucking Alibaba, you know? You know, and shit like that. I mean, I mean, you know, like the creator of Alibaba, literally when he stepped up. By the way, that guy doesn't own Ali, Alibaba anymore, the creator. He had to give it up to China because he basically said, oh, I'm stepping down. I'm, get, I'm, I'm retiring for the greater good of the company. I think that it's, it's, it's in better hands in the, 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 you know, the government of uh, China. It, yeah. And you, you should see his face when he was saying that you, you feel, he looks so like, you know, you ripped his heart out. You took his company away, you know? Yeah. Actually, another thing too, I know that China's like the, the leader in that 5g technology. <laughs> and, I, and I know a lot of people hate 5g and all that, but I'm just saying like, <clears throat> if they are going to roll it out, it's a billion hundreds of billion dollar industry. And this could even be just a way to steer all other countries away from China and maybe going back to the companies in the U.S. who are developing that sort of technology. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that 5G stuff. And uh, and yeah, yeah I, 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 that's I, something I'm not too familiar with. But I have seen, um, I don't know, some things on YouTube where like straight scientists are like, this stuff is so bad for people. Right. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's already bad enough with what we have, you know, with the radiation from the cell phones and all this shit, that 5g stuff is just another, another, another scale, you know what I mean? Another level. Yeah. And, um, it is some scary stuff. And especially since we don't need it, you know, we don't need it yeah. right now. And so it's like, That's why, actually... why are they rolling it out? And we don't need it. We don't need that speed. We don't need any of that shit. And what they're not rolling it out, by the way, That's all fake. Um, you know, I'm gonna give you some, uh, tech techie stuff now, but whenever you're seeing, I don't know if it's T-Mobile or Verizon or whoever the fuck is saying, Oh, we're rolling out 5g across the state. It's not, it's just 4g plus basically. You know what I mean? It's just 4g with a little whatever, but again, just like they can fucking sell you organic and it's not, you know what I mean? Um, they can do the same thing with, um, with, you know, 5g, you know, so they're selling you 5g in the U S but it's not 5g. It's just 4g plus, but yeah, they are going to start rolling out that 5g eventually in the U S and to me again, you know, if you, you know, like in my opinion, it's just, uh, all part of like, um, the whole mind control MK ultra stuff, you know, yada, 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 you know, all the propaganda, whether it's on TV, whether it's, um, you know, through, through any other medium, like, you know, like the, Insta, the social medias right now, where they're basically, um, they have everybody like zombies, you know, people are worried about this coronavirus and the zombie apocalypse, but it's like, the zombie apocalypse is already here, we're surrounded by them, you know, basically, it's everybody, you know, um, that uh, watches the Kardashians on a regular basis, you know, I mean, or whatever, and, um, yeah. You know, and I don't want to pick on the Kardashians, you know, but anything like that, you know what I mean? You know, anyone, uh, okay, and there's a lot of people out there probably listening right now. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to please like and subscribe. Anyways, uh, <laughs> no, but, but you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like basically we're, you know, like the whole zombie thing is already uh, alive and well. And um, yeah, that's how they keep everybody in control. And so like the whole 5G thing, that's just another level, you know what I mean, to all that stuff. Um, basically, um, you know, the fact that they can uh, shoot all these radio waves already and, uh, Again, I know I'm already fucking like the, the average person is listening to me out there's like, bro, this fucking guy is, you know, beyond nuts. <laughs> but no, you know what I mean? Basically, the whole aluminum fucking foil on your head uh, type of shit, um, there's a reason for that, you know what I mean? Uh, because they are fucking shooting all kinds of suggestive beams and all kinds of shit into your head. But, uh, you know, again, with the technology they have now, it's, it's not enough. And you can basically block it out with a piece of aluminum foil on your head. But that 5G shit... Okay, you know what I mean? That's uh, you know that, that again, you know what I mean? That, the, the, uh, you know that stuff is gonna just be go beyond penetrating your skull, okay? And yeah. um, and that's the scary part to all that shit because I mean, we already, I mean, again, you can you you can already see on YouTube plenty of videos um of scientists, you know, basically um, you know, uh, what is it? Measuring the radiation and measuring all that shit that goes behind that. And uh, it's some scary stuff, man. I mean, uh, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you could just do the test with your fucking cell phone. You know, you don't even have to go 5G so you can see how scary this shit is. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if you watch Jason Burmis's channel. He was one of the guys who was involved with making, like, loose change. And he did a bunch of other documentaries. 
but he's saying that the, the whole 5G thing is just like a better, faster way for the government to track everything that you do. If your phone has to keep connecting to this and they're like on every single street corner, you know what I mean? The amount of data gathering that they could start pulling um, would just be like through the roof. Man, I think I, that was pretty about, interesting. I, 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 mean, I don't know who that guy is or anything like that, but how about this? Let me break it down how these cell phones work. These cell phones, like are collecting data 24 hours a day, no matter if they're not even connected to the fucking internet or even connected to a battery. So yeah. and then basically the minute you connect um, to anything, then that's when it starts fucking shooting that stuff out. So yeah, you're right. You're right in the sense of like the 5G is only going to make it things faster. You know what I mean? But uh, things are fast enough. You know what I mean? When it comes to the data collection that they that they have at that, the moment. In fact, in fact, there's, there's so much data collection that they can't even sift through all of it fast enough. So that's why that that's why the whole artificial intelligence stuff is uh, you know kind of scary because uh, you know to me it's like um, depending remember artificial intelligence is basically we're teaching robots teaching machines how to do stuff so again it's like anything else if you have a child or a dog you can teach that child or dog to be a good person or a good dog or a very bad person or a very bad dog so if we're teaching this uh, you know artificial intelligence uh, how to be a bad person or a bad uh, player, or, or as our president like to say, a bad hombre, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna end well. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah. that's, that's basically, you know, the, the fear with um, the artificial intelligence. You know, the fact that we're not teaching it uh, to be a good uh, thing. You know, and even, uh, even for like the judgment calls, I saw. I don't want. I want to say maybe Starbucks, but I might not be a hundred percent correct on that. But there is a major company right now, or it's Amazon. Amazon is firing people based off of um, like the the supercomputers or whatever it is. The, the what do they call them again? The artificial intelligence. They're firing people. They're making judgment calls, and uh, so that means like nobody's looking over any of this. They just you know look at oh this person is checking this many boxes, this amount of time, and this is when they show up to work. This is when they leave, and uh, they they look at all of that and they decide oh what we got to get somebody new, and and they'll just fire somebody. Making judgment calls like that with computers, I think, is pretty horrifying. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It, it is kind of cr- – I mean, it happens to, to me on YouTube all the time. You know I mean, basically with a computer is the one that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, flagging me and all that shit. But, yeah, I mean, it's – again, just going back to the technology aspect of it, it's like, you know, basically now talking tech nerd stuff, you know, what the tech nerds want. You know I mean? You know, and this is – I'm all about technology too. I know it's – you know, they can be, it can be scary, but it also can be very amazing. But, yeah, basically yeah. what they're trying to do with the machines is that to get it to the point – where you know it's you know not only doing what it's doing there but to the point where it basically which is this is the scary part where it says we don't need this human you know what i mean in fact i can do it better myself in fact i can just build a better version of myself and have that do it instead of the human and that's where we're yeah. heading because with 3d printing and all this other shit i mean that's the direction we're heading but again you know if you look at it from the optimistic bright side of things uh, that would be like a good thing it's just again it's just that the, the, the thing is that there are all people all around the world that are feeding this artificial intelligence that is a worldwide intelligence. It's not like um, these artificial intelligences are, how do I say this, like separate, you know what I mean? Like a bunch of humans are separate with their intelligence. No, it's actually like this, uh, it's a collective conscious, you know, basically. So all of the artificial intelligence is a collective conscious like, like we are. You know, you're familiar with that, right? The collective consciousness and... Yeah. Okay. And so that that's what how uh, artificial intelligence works. So you know, just like uh, right now, there's uh, um, you get what I'm saying, like the U.S. military and uh, Amazon and all these individuals that are kind of feeding the algorithm with semi-negative or very negative things. You know, there's other um, scientists, you know, around the world, you know, that are actually doing the complete opposite. You know what I mean? Which are actually feeding it very positive, very good things. And uh, and people like you and me that are coders that are also you know, adding to, to this, um, this code and to, to this intelligence. And, and so, you know, basically, I mean, I can even point you to certain websites, you know, that, um, where you can be part of the contribution, you know, meaning that you work, you know, like, uh, how do I say this? Like, um, you get tasks that you, um, are, you know, put out to do, and that helps, uh, feed the artificial intelligence, um, the, the right way. You know what I mean? So if, uh, you, you know what I mean? But, but again, it's like, it's all on judgment, on human judgment. You know what I mean? So, you know, but the thing is that a lot of people, you know, we're under the impression that all, you know, a lot of humans are bad and people are bad and no, no, 
it's basically there's only a few people that are in power that are bad. You know, we're most most humans are pretty good people. Most humans are actually good people. So if all of us actually get involved in uh, the collective conscious of uh, the uh, the uh, you know the artificial intelligence, then you know all of a sudden we can shape it in in our in our own vision. You know, kind of like how God created us, right? In His right in His vision or something like that, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Wait, that is pretty heady that they have a website like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch Help of program. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of them like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know them off the top of my head. You know, my you know, my friend does and shit like that. And uh, uh but yeah, yeah, it is really cool. And you can actually make money from these things too. Like uh, you know, meaning that you can sign up and you know, you know, we I should look into it a little more, maybe even, you know, do we should talk about this one of these uh, days. Uh but yeah, you know, where you can actually make money um by contributing to to uh to the you know, to this, you know, to the to the you know, the the collective consciousness of this uh um, algorithmic artificial intelligence. Yeah, actually, I saw a meme once. It was like a captcha, and it was like, "What are we programming these these robots to do?" And I thought that was kind of funny. Well, now those captchas are part of that too. Yeah, yeah, because we, we are teaching. Basically, we're teaching you know robots what these things are, and that's what I'm saying. You know, like if we if all of a sudden you you can you know a lot of uh, imagine of troll. Like some kid with like some troll mentality, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm going to just get on one of these things. And it's like, if I see a banana, I'm going to put an apple. If I see an airplane, I'm going to put a car and shit like that. And then all of a sudden you're feeding the machine wrong information. And so the, the same thing, you know, could be said with, uh, again, if when the U.S. military, you get what I'm saying? Or, you know, other private corporations, you know, like uh, these, you know, these big tech corporations are feeding these algorithms the wrong thing. And, um, you know, the thing about the employee thing might seem really fucking horrible right now, you know, like meaning how the machine is figuring out which is the least productive employees and firing them. But again, coming from the business side of things, you know, me, you know, uh, you know, like when it's all about, you know, like the bottom line and trying to, you know, production and all this shit, you know, it's actually pretty fucking cool. You know what I mean? And so, but to me, it's like, again, to me, it's like we're moving. And, and again, it sounds cruel. It sounds horrible. It sounds anything. But, you know, when, with all with all innovation, with all technology, with all these things, there's a lot of um, things like this that happen. You got to remember that back in the day, let's just say the invention of, of the tractor. How many farmers did it put out of fucking business? You know, out of a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's like, thank God that we were able to invent the tractor. We have a tractor nowadays. And so I can go on and on with all kinds of technologies like that. And I really, again, I'm a technology guy. And so I really do know deep down in my heart and my soul um, just because of, you know, again, just because of the things that I talk about that, yeah, man, we're going to be beyond okay. And it's like, yeah, we're, what, the thing is that, look, man, we are now not going to be, we're going to, there's going to be less of those crappy jobs that go around, meaning there's going to be less you know, jobs like a delivery person or working as a gas station attendant or working at McDonald's or working at Amazon. There's going to be less and less and less of those jobs, but it doesn't mean, right, that we all of a sudden are going to be useless with nothing to do. That's a propaganda that they're fucking, you know, throwing at us. But again, if you go back to just like what humans are, you know, there's tons of shit that we're going to be doing. Again, like what we're doing now, which is creating uh, this podcast or, um, you know what I mean, creating art or creating, there's so many fucking things that we as humans can actually do that is not working like a like an employer like a like a like a worker b or worker ant because in fact that's not what we're supposed to do all right what we're supposed to be doing is you know this this you know just being human you know we're we're animals after all you know what i mean we're really just supposed to be living and not supposed to be chained up in these fucking cubicles you know mm -hmm. like an office space all right, living that fucking, you know, like, do you got a case of the Mondays? You know, like, bro, shoot me now. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, work. I always look at my job as just like an end. The best, fastest way for me to make the most. Um, and then also, once I have all that done, I can spend all my free time doing whatever I want to do. You know what I mean? Like making videos or reading a book. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think once, because I, yeah, I know that's like a major concern for a lot of people who are like, we're, we're, we're really into that Andrew Yang. And I know like sort of Bernie supporters are on about this, but like the whole automation, what's going to happen. But I think, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be as bad and as devastating and as, as quick as those people made it out to be, but it is going to happen. And I think though, as it slowly sort of, um, you know, starts to take away these different jobs, people are going to be shifting their focus away to something else that they, they do like to do. And then they're going to, they're going to have to figure out a way to monetize it. 
And um, well, yeah, but, you know, that's, I, but that's the thing, though. You know, what I mean, it's a great point that you make because, again, I talk about this a lot on my channel, meaning the fact that you know we're going to come to a few, begin, you know, the whole Bitcoin cryptocurrency stuff, you know, the whole banking situation. You know, basically, we're moving in. This is a humongous paradigm shift in humans and in human history and human uh, evolution and human everything. Basically, we're moving now into a world where this whole uh, you know making money to pay bills is not really going to be a thing, and we're not we're not going to be needing like things like communism to make things like that happen, which again, they're failures and they don't work anyway or for socialism. But yeah, you know what I mean? That's the thing, you know, and so the people that have been running the old legacy system for hundreds of years, you know, they, they see this coming and they don't like it because that means that now they're not going to be in power and that all of a sudden everything's just going to change. Remember, just like it happened 500 years ago um, when the church was in power. Like, like for real is in power, even though the church is still in power. But that's another story. But the point is, is that, you know, how the church was really in power 500 years ago. And um, there was this guy named Mr. Mr. Martin Luther, you know, that all of a sudden started using this thing called uh, the printing press, you know, to start letting people know, hey, uh, you know, these, uh, these guys in power in the Catholic church aren't really, you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing. You know, they say uh, the Bible says that we're supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. And these Catholic priests are out there, you know, fucking, you know, every fucking wench in the, in the, in the, what is it? In the commune, you know, they're out there drinking and partying and doing drugs all night. They're doing all this shit. It's like, that's not what God said, you know? And again, it was just because people didn't know um, what the Bible said, because back then the Bible was only in Latin and people didn't know how to read Latin. They barely know how to read their language, you know, of wherever they were. So all of a sudden when, uh, you know, Mr. Um, Martin Luther started uh, printing the Bible and, languages other languages or the ability for that to happen was was invented you know just like we have this new uh technology that's allowing us to do basically the same thing with the internet <clears throat> and all this stuff um but anyways but you know just going back to, to what he did you know he he all of a sudden was able to educate the population um with um what the bible really said because he was able to translate the bible from latin into english into german into spanish into all of these languages, and then all of a sudden it just took one or two people in the town of the community to speak or to, you know, read and write, which people, you know, did, you know, and then all of a sudden that one person was able to read the Bible in their own language to the people. And as people were reading the Bible, they're like, hey, wait a minute, what the fuck? You know, you know, so it's kind of like the same thing that's happening now. We're going through a mass awakening and people are now, as they're losing their jobs, as they're losing their livelihood, as all this shit is like starting to fucking, you know, the, the shit is starting to pile up and hit the fan. Now people are having a little bit more time to look into this shit and as they do they're educating themselves and as they're educating themselves they're like oh wait a minute and so on and so forth because again you know people are probably listening to this either a while they're running their home business at home or b they're working a shit job you know that they're not even paying attention to because they're paying attention to us and um you know they're learning and, and more about how to you know what you know again going down deep down, deep down the rabbit hole whether they're right now listening to um you know, a lot of the same old stuff that they've already listened to or a lot of this stuff is very new to people. And um, it's like a huge um, wake up call, you know, just like when people watch the movie Office Space for the first time ever. And people just started like waking the fuck up and be like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? What the what am I doing here? You know? Um, yeah. yeah, actually, that that's true with podcasts in general. Like a lot of people are just working. I don't know, a job, a menial task. You know what I mean? But they are just now spending time learning about something that they're actually interested in. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know a lot of, I feel like a lot of podcasts, especially the ones that like are pushed by you two. I know like Jimmy Fallon has his own podcast now. I don't know who would ever want to listen to that, but, but like the ones that are actually going to like something like a Bitcoin channel and listening to that stuff or like, I, I, like I know way more about foreign policy than someone like me should. And it's because I spend all my time at work. I'm um, listening to like Scott Horton's show. I listen to a lot of the Mises Institute's podcast. That's why I'm like a big advocate for sound money and all of that. And um, yeah, like th that is a completely new paradigm because now somebody could be at work making their living, doing something that doesn't really matter too much in the grand scheme of things, but they could, uh, you know, absorb all of this information now. Um, I really think that is a, a big game changer and yeah. a subtle one too, because I don't know when we'll start actually seeing the effects of that it, but it, it's it's happening you know what i mean yeah yeah it's graduates it's all part of the thing that i was saying now because it's basically we're moving from one 
huge the paradigm shift is happening is that we're we're going away from the old uh, system of uh, you know we're just factory workers you know what I mean and um, to now we're going to be creators you know and everybody is a creator because even if you're just a factory worker you're still creating but imagine now that you instead of working in a factory you're working in your home or you have the ability to you know again uh, produce something for a 3d printer you get what i'm saying or like us that we're producing a podcast and again in the future about this whole money thing we're not going to have like a government or like an entity like have control of this money no all of us are going to be like create our own value and uh, how are we going to get our uh, paid for this value how are we going to get uh you know what i mean like uh uh, what is it uh, compensated for this value that we're creating? It's well, basically like right now we're you know, we're making a podcast, and uh, the the people that would be listening or you know again our audience you know um, and it, that would be what would be paying us. And how does it pay us again? You know this is all you know I hypothetical numbers. We're talking future here, but how it would pay us is that you know we have our own tokens, and then we earn these tokens, we create these tokens as we're creating this content. Um, when people listen to us, they would be absorbing our tokens, you know, taking our tokens, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? And then these tokens would gain value because, again, as more people listen to us, more of these tokens are out there, kind of like a currency. They can then be exchanged for Uber tokens, Target tokens, yeah. um, another token, whatever. And so that's the thing. And so now um, when we're moving into this new world in which, you know, the bank – the banking system is going to be kind of like obsolete because we don't need that middleman anymore because every person out there is going to be creating some sort of token or value system that we can trade for just about anything. Um, then again, why would we need these uh, banks? And so, you know, and then people are like, well, what can I create? And again, it doesn't really matter what you do because let's just say that you do um, a physical comedy show. You know, you know what? I'm, I'm trying to think of introverted things that people can do and again it could be art it could be um coding it could be there's like a million gazillion things that people can do that i'm sure people would rather be doing than whatever the fuck it is that they are doing right now and yeah. um and that's the thing actually it's, it's the scary part you... yeah the scary part is just thinking about it and um the change change is scary go ahead man I say, even if you look at things like Etsy, and and that's like a huge site now. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like making the laughs and then selling it, and um, like that's something like my mom was talking about because she makes like all these little things she sews, and uh, she wanted to start selling on Etsy, and like she's you know a pretty old lady, um, like like things like that that people are like they do want to do. I feel like all just like weirdo old house moms are the ones selling a bunch of stuff on Etsy, and it's all like weird little trinkets that you would buy at the gap at the, you know, at the counter as you're checking out. And now though, you have somebody made a unique one. And um, I don't know, I noticed things like that. It, it's always happening when there's hard economic times, but people like these, these little things, something that isn't like manufactured that, that there's not a million of, they like having something that was actually handmade. It's unique. There's only one like that. Even if they make multiple of that thing, you know what I mean? Each one is unique. And um yeah. It, it is things like that, but like she has more time now, so she could sew, and now she's trying to figure out how to be selling it. And um, I don't know Etsy, and and there's so many people selling things like that on mm-hmm. Etsy. Mm-hmm. So and not just Etsy, and, but all kinds of shit. You know what I mean? And you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just like one example. I I also saw like with the way like um like IKEA or Walmart, the way that they'll sell like very cheap particle board furniture and that was the thing for a little while but that was like a whole you know just keep spending imagine, every two imagine years the day, imagine the day where you would have like a 3d printer in your house and you would purchase furniture and it would just be 3d printed in your house oh yeah yeah that you know what as I mean? well and like in literally 10 years from now kids are yeah. going to be able to have like a portable 3d printer that's going to be the size of like a fanny pack and they would just be able to get like uh you know, plastic or cans or whatever the fuck recyclables they find out there, and they would be able to make stuff out of that. You know, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're that's how close we are to like all this stuff. And I'm saying ten years, but it's probably gonna be a lot less than that. Yeah. Well, actually, what I was saying, like, what I was trying to get at though, is just like the instead of having to buy a new IKEA table every two years, people now are starting to go out and spend like five, six hundred, sometimes like a thousand dollars on like a nice handmade oak wood table yeah, yeah. that like they're gonna have for the next thirty years. You know what I mean? Like oh, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. You know, we're moving into because again, this is all history. So I don't know. I think like I, I know there's a lot of people that's all doom and gloom about the future. I'm pretty optimistic about it. And I mean, like we could already see it. The, the tide is turning here, so I don't know. 
<laughs> I yeah, like to yeah. be optimistic. But yeah, for sure, man. This is all like history, man. You know, just like uh, as the technology, you know, pushes forward and there's going to be tons of people adopting this technology that I'm talking about now at the same exact time. There's going to be people that have already been um, tired of the old technology, you know, and now they're adopting, you know, um, going back into like old school. Like I look at more like me living out here in Mexico type of shit, you know, minimizing, you know, and like stuff like that. But, you know, the people that are going to be, um, you know, literally making these uh, technological strides are not going to be people in the U.S., man. I'm, I mean, it's just not. It's going to be mostly people like in India, in Africa. You get what I'm saying? China. A lot of yeah. them, Latin America. You know why? Because these people, they don't, they never, they don't have iPhones. They don't have any of the stuff that you have. You know what I mean? Technology wise. So, you know, they don't want to minimize. They've already had, you know, oak wood tables, you know, or whatever the fuck tables. You get what I'm saying? That's all they have. So all of a sudden now they have the ability for very cheap, you know what I mean? To do all of these really cool things and have all this really cool technology. So they're the ones that are going to be adopting and innovating and creating and pushing for, man, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on India lately and like, holy shit. Man, India is like, man, they're they're not even they're doing the same thing as Mexico. They're like, man, we don't even want to send you to fucking America anymore. And Indians are coming back to India. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it, man. We're gonna build our own country up, and things are better here than in the U.S. And blah blah blah. And uh, and yeah, dude, I'm telling you, man. Like, and same as Africa and all these and, and Latin America, China, and, and many many more countries. You know, but <clears throat> yeah, all this innovation, all this uh, innovation to for the future is gonna be happening in other parts of the world and uh, the U.S. You know, um, part of the transition is going to be going back, you know, again, you know, going back to better times, you know what I mean, right? Going back, you know, to the nostalgia, you know, of uh, not just, you know, like a, a like a hard oak wood table um, and handmade crafts, but again, even society and uh, all the things that are happening within society. Because again, as you already know, you know, the rubber band when it comes to the societal things that are happening at the moment are, you know, just so far on one side, you know, of... Uh, of uh, one, of one uh, what is a societal spectrum? And I'm trying to just, you know, be very vague, you know, you know, trying not to talk about, you know, left, right, up or down or anything like that. But you know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, you know, these are all part of that whole same, uh, um, what is it like uh, a cycle? You know what I mean? That they all, you know, it, it all. Yeah. yeah. And even like just things like that, it's also, it makes you feel like you actually accomplished something. I think with everybody being depressed right now, it's because most of the time they're not doing anything that matters at all. They're not creating anything. And uh, I don't know, just like the self-fulfillment, you kind of feel when you make something, even if it's good, if it's bad, it doesn't matter. You made it. You know what I mean? It lets off something in your brain that, um, I don't know, it, it makes people happy to be doing stuff like that. Yes, yes. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head there, man, because that's, that's part of that, that whole cycle, you know, coming full circle where now, you know, we as Americans, you know, and, uh, you know, we're going back to um, to that, you know what I mean, where it's just that we've had enough of the whole corporate life and the whole everything, and we're now, you know, starting to settle in. Look, how about this? I, I heard this um, guy talk about this from, you know, from a historical perspective as to what's going to happen to America, and I was like, and I found it very interesting because... Uh, I was like, fuck, man, yeah, I mean, this is makes 100% sense. So uh, at one point, you know, like like 500, again, 500 years ago, um, Europe was America. And what do I mean by that? Meaning that they were, you know, full-blown capitalist mode, full-blown, uh, you know what I mean? Like uh, taking over the world, full-blown, you know, everything like that. And, uh, you know, basically, um, you know, after, you know, that started deteriorating, that's when you're seeing, like, when you see, like, how Europe is today, meaning that no matter what country you go in Europe, yeah, everybody works hard and does their thing, but, you know, there's just something about Europe where everybody's just chill, you know what I mean? Nobody takes it, you know what I mean? Everyone's just like, you know, they got to have their wine at a certain time, you know what I mean? They got to, <laughs> right? And during Spain, you got to have your siesta. <clears throat> if you're in Italy, everyone's just laid back, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> the, you know, the whole European lifestyle that you always hear about. And so basically, it's because they, they, they already went through the whole growth cycle that America went through, but back in the day. And so now as they rebuilt, you know, their, their respective countries and along in Europe and all this stuff, they um, rebuilt with this um, kind of like mentality of like, you know, the old world, the old, you know, that whole old, uh, again, you know, just basically what you were just describing, you know, meaning like that they take love and passion in artisan crafts, you know, whether it's making a table or making whiskey or making you know, a beer or making food or making anything like that. And so now all of a sudden you're seeing a, a brand new um, thing in our culture that is only beginning. 
you know, that is uh, very closely related to like what Europe has been doing for fuck for a long time now. And um, now we are going to be more, you know, like into the whole European, uh, you know, mode and European lifestyle where, you know, yeah, we're going to get back to some power again. And in, in who knows when, you know, a hundred years from now and all this shit. But when that happens, because, uh, because by the way, look, I know we're in power now, but, you know, I'm, I'm speaking in the, you know, the fact that, you know, the U.S. is going to lose its power and then we're going to gain power again at some point. You know, hey, it's, it happens all the time. But anyways, but when, in, in the meantime, you know, um, yeah, you know, by the time that we get back to that point, um, you know, we rebuild and we go through all that shit again. You know, we're going to be a completely different country where we're going to resemble more like Europe, where you're going to go to California and people are just going to be artisan about their fucking wine and their weed and their whatever. And you go to Wyoming and they're fucking, you know, they're experts in fucking tables or, or woodcraft and, and, and whatever, you know, you go to Wisconsin and they got the best fucking cheese and, and dairy products in the planet and so on and so forth. You're going to be seeing a lot of that, you know, in the future. And, um, and then you're going to see China you know, China is going to, is the, is the country that now in the next hundred years, they're going to be going through what America went through, which is going to be that work, 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 you know, insanity of, uh, you know, empire building until, they don't, you know what I mean? And then it's just, you know, who knows who's going to be next and, and so on and so forth. But I mean, I don't know. I, when I, when I kind of heard that and it made me think of like, yeah, because again, it's, it's a, uh oh, <laughs> oh sorry. no, no, sorry. No, but it's exactly what you were just saying. You know what I mean? Uh, about the fact that, yeah, we're going back into all that artisan, uh, you know, craft lifestyle, you know what I mean? And pretty much everything. And, uh, we're, you know, the typical American now is like, fuck the system. Fuck that corporate job. I would rather just make, uh, you know, wooden uh, tables or wooden furniture for the rest of my life. You get what I'm saying? And sell it on fucking Etsy or sell it on, make my own website. You know what I mean? I can do that now because uh, I can just go to Squarespace or Wix or whatever. You know what I mean? And build my own website. Do, do my own thing. Be, be an entrepreneur um, and blah, 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 blah. So, I don't know. I mean, what do you think about what I just said? Because, I mean, literally it's just, you know, basically, you know, ponying off what you were just saying there. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, that's definitely a trend. And it, it usually comes about in like harder economic times as things start slowing down. And uh, I don't know, because I think it also the, the way that the, the economy had grown exponentially and everybody's out here in, in the rat race. And um, I don't know, like it, it really does, I feel like, suck the life out of people. And whether it's, you know, in a modern sense or whether it was back, you know, in the roaring 20s or something like that, I just feel like the, the I don't know. It gets to you some way on some level. And um, I don't know. I think that has a lot to do with why a lot of people are depressed anymore. Why a lot of people don't have a helpful outlook. I think that's actually what's driving all these people into thinking that the government is going to be the one taking care of them and they should, and that they're entitled to all of these different things. Um, I think it all stems from depression. I think that that depression is stemming from uh, the, the society and, the, and just how fast everything had, had kind of exploded there but as it starts tapering back though i think people are going to start go going back to doing things that that is meaningful to them whether or not it has some kind of great impact on the world it doesn't really matter because also like the way that people idolize different like the, everybody loves elon musk and and they strive to be something like elon musk but it's almost like they bought into the pr campaign of elon musk they don't really know too much about him or how he gets his funding but everybody wants to be that successful I don't know, same thing like Bill Gates and all of them, like people look at these people and they're like, oh, I could be that. And then they start trying to and they, they end up nowhere near that and they feel defeated or something like that. So I think, yeah. I don't know, as, as things get slower here with the economy, I think people are going to be just like, oh, well, I used to play guitar a lot. I'm going to start doing that again. Or I used to like to draw. I'm going to start drawing again. And it doesn't matter, you know, if they end up starting a band or selling their drawings or it, they'll just feel happier that they're doing these things again. They're not trying to become the next Elon Musk or the next, you know, whatever it is. Just like the idolization of everything, I think, is, is pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's basically it. It's all like the cycle. And uh, and yeah, you know, like what basically what's driving people to take pride in their work and do, do these things, you know, like whether it's make this podcast or, you know, make a wooden table or um, I need a wooden table now. I don't know why I keep obsessing over that. Or, you know, or whatever, make some uh, artisan and wine or whatever the fuck. You know, the point is, is because, you know, people have lost that, you know, that that um, that ability of freedom, that ability of, uh, you know, liberty, you know, basically. And so people are like, you know, they just uh, feel frustrated and depressed, as you said. And to them, it's like, you know what? 
Um, I'm, th I mean, look, this is something that I tell people all the time, you know what I mean? Because I do motivational bullshit and I talk about, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V, you know, he definitely, you know, preaches and talks about this shit all the time. And like what we were just talking now, but basically it's like this, this is the quote, why starve doing something that you hate when you can starve doing something that you love? And so a lot of people are realizing that and people are like, well, you know what? Fuck this shit. You know what I mean? Like I'm not getting anywhere. In fact, I'm going negative trying to chase this dream or trying to chase this, uh, you know, this uh, rat, this uh, carrot that's not, you know, even yeah. real. And uh, when basically all I got to do is just uh, follow my dream, do whatever the fuck I want to do. And yeah, if I got to work a shit job, it's just to uh, pay the bills. But that's not my thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm this other thing is what gives me love and pleasure and uh and uh, it helps me wake up in the morning every day, uh, whether again, whether it's a YouTube channel or podcast or art or music or, um, you know, again, uh, it could be anything like mechanics. It could be a million fucking thing, anything, you know what I mean? But anything but what you're doing now that's making you depressed. And so a lot of people are yeah, just uh, snapping out of it. And more. And again, as you said, as the economy gets worse and worse and the incentive to do that is more than it is to work. That's where people are going to go. And that's why, like, the whole communism thing uh, finally hit, gets to a head because the communism thing is like, it's like, yeah, people want the government to help and they get frustrated and uh, they get put in that position. And then they think that the government's going to support them. But then they, when, you know, the first day of communism starts, they also realize that communism is like, yeah, well, in order to make this thing fucking happen, you got to go to work. So what's your job? I don't know. Here's your job. You know, your yeah, job is this. Yeah. Whatever the fuck it is, it's on you the paper. You mop the floors now or something. Yeah. And so people are like, uh-oh, wait a minute. And so, yeah, and so, you know, it's like a, it's a, you know, it's a very visceral wake-up call that comes way too late. And, uh, you know, yeah, man. You know, like, and actually, and then once that happens, too, it is way too late. <laughs> um, there's no going back now for a while. Yeah, man, and that's basically it. And so... I mean, it's all cycles, and so, like, I think that, the thing is that, like, again, like, I heard this on, uh, this is on Joe Rogan, but, like, it was, um, damn, what the fuck is this guy's name, man? You know, his, you know, do you listen to Joe Rogan, you know, what's this guy's name, the guy, his best? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, every once in a while, I'll see, like, a clip and watch it, but I don't, like, tune in too regularly. Man, I'm gonna see if I can find this guy's name, you know, real quick, uh, but, yeah, this guy right here, uh, Duncan Trussell. So Duncan Trussell, he was on the show one time, and you know this guy's like a fucking uh, cosmonaut, you know what I mean? Just like him, you know, uh, you know, meaning you know, do a lot of psychedelics and shit. But basically, you know, he said that in one of his uh, trips that he realized like what life is, and that life, and like I'm, I'm gonna do this on the screen for anyone that's watching, but that life is basically a cycle, <clears throat> but the cycle is also like a spiral, and as each cycle um finishes or comes to a conclusion it, it just it, it either goes a little up or a little down in the spiral and it, obviously you know what i mean if you're you know the you know you know the whole universe or the whole anything is getting better you know whether it's your own personal life or things in history or whatever um if it's getting better the cycle just goes up and up so meaning for example let me just give you a quick example like uh like the whole uh, feminism thing that people all complain about and all this shit now look again now it's coming to the point where the rubber band is snapping back all right and um as it snaps back and people go full conservative because again that's what always happens you know everyone's super crazy left and then they go super conservative again look at iran and the hajibs or whatever the fuck um but uh again if you look at iran pre-1979 everybody was uh, right okay um, you know, it was everybody with mini skirts and then boom, hajibs overnight. But <clears throat> basically what happens is that as these things snap back, you know, sometimes they get snapped back, you know, in a very disastrous way or they snap back. And, um, as they make their way back up up the cycle, um, you get a little better, meaning that, um, you know, you, the women get a little bit more rights, a little bit more, you know, we move as a society in, in, uh, in, uh, what is it? In a better direction in that way. And it's true because the, everybody thinks that the whole feminism thing is something that is a brand new thing, but no, man, this has been happening since fucking the Roman times. It's just that as each cycle, you know, uh, progresses and we move up that spiral, it just gets a little better and a little better and a little better and a little, you get what I'm saying? And like, and they, again, they're just with that, but they pretty much anything, you know what I mean? Like, uh, civil human rights, you know, so many fucking things, you know what I mean? Like, uh, knowledge. And, and so on and so forth. And so, um, yeah, I forgot where I was going with this, you know, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Just the point that like, I really do think that, you know, as the human race right now, we're, you know, in a, depending on where you are on the planet, you know, we are mid cycle or ending of a cycle or the beginning of a cycle. 
but regardless, no matter where that cycle is taking place, you know, uh, that we are progressing upwards because again, like for example, the U S is ending the cycle, but you, we are, you know, the U S is progressing upwards unless it goes full communism. And then that's a fucking disaster. And you go, you know, that's the spiral downwards. Now, like, let's say Mexico, <clears throat> Mexico, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. Uh, Mexico is, uh, uh, they're beginning their spiral and they're moving upwards. Um, same as China, they're big, you know, they're kind of like mid cycle and they're moving upwards, you know, despite what you might think is happening with the whole virus shit. Same as Russia. They're also moving upwards and so on and so forth. You know, there's a lot of other countries like uh, some countries in Europe there. <clears throat> their spiral is, uh, you know, again, ending, ending like in the U.S., but they're moving upwards. And so, you know, that's what I can go on and on, you know, with that. But I don't know. I, I, that's what I think is happening. And I think that's also happening with the whole, the whole human collective conscious. And uh, especially, yeah, I remember the point I was making. <clears throat> the fact that we now have this technology, the Internet, the ability to, you know, um, right now I'm in Mexico. You're in the East Coast of the U.S. Um, people are probably listening to this in Europe. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. And, um, you know, the ability that, again, now as the cycle is, you know, uh, moving upwards, it's really moving upwards. And we're really, like, you know, doing some some damage in, in a good way, you know what I mean, to, to the human conscious and to, like, just everything. And uh, I don't know, man. What do you think about that huge fucking mouthful of a thought? That... <laughs> no, that, I mean, that is a good way to look at it all like like leveling up or something like that you know yeah. what i mean or you get knocked out like shoots and ladders or something um <clears throat> that i mean that is a, a really good way to look at it all and uh i mean i hope america is, is going up to that next level i hope we don't go down uh i don't know <laughs> uh it is crazy though that like, like like you said you're in mexico i'm in the united states somebody in europe could be listening to this or somebody in, in canada australia china you know what i mean that definitely, that is definitely, something definitely that the, is and, pretty powerful yeah, definitely the nsa offices <laughs> yeah, yeah no but that's something like I, if i would were to tell my dad i'm doing this he might be like that's insane because you know he he had no idea that any of this could even be happening you know what i mean he's an older guy and um you know, or even like if somebody told him his son would be doing that at some point, he might think I'm on I'm on the news that I'm Walter Cronkite or something. You know what I mean? Back in the day, not understanding that, oh, no, we'll have this thing, the Internet, there'll be a thing like YouTube. You know what I mean? Like if somebody came and was like, yo, your, your son will be talking to all of these people all over the world. He might be like thinking I'm going to be I don't you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, if that yeah. Makes I mean, yeah, no, of course it does. Of course it does. And again, you know, going just back to what so I was just I, saying. Yeah. With the cycle and the thing and then, you know, the cycle of going upwards and shit. Look, a hundred years ago, it was the radio <clears throat> and everybody had a CB antenna radio. And they were, you know, there was uh, all these radio stations, right? All these podcasts, you know, like now. And so now we're again with the cycle already kind of like ended and we're starting it over again when it comes to that part of it. Um, and so, you know what I mean? Like with that whole idea of liberty and freedom and all this shit, having, uh, you know, these rate the, the, the voice, you know what I mean? On the radio, whether we get censored or not and everybody being able to, you know, to do broadcast and, uh, and all this shit. I mean, that we, we, you know, we're going through a brand new Renaissance when it comes to that as well. And, uh, and now with the new technology of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain bullshit stuff, you know, um, they can't censor you, you know, because yeah, they can maybe, you know, eventually censor what we're doing now. But again, you know, now we're, you know, we're already building the new brand new thing on this blockchain that can be censored and we can just put it on there, you know, just like BitChute or just like a library, you know, shout out to all those programs out there and shout out to, you know, all the other, you know, decentralized uh, programs out there trying to, you know, do some stuff. But again, man, I'm sorry. I, I kept interrupting, bro. I know this is like the, uh, name, bro. I'm horrible. No, it's all good. Actually, it's crazy too. Cause um, my dad's dad was around before there was cars. And like he remember when like the first cars started coming out and like nobody really had them. And then uh, I don't know, like my told me a story about how he would go over his like neighbor's house, at, like all the families on his on his block would go over there because they had the only TV and they would all sit down and watch TV and everybody was blown away by it. And uh, so that just goes to show you, like in two generations, we went from like no cars to having a TV now to me and you talking to each other in different countries. It, 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 like, I don't know, that, that's insanely fast when you look at it like that. Oh, yeah, man. And again, it's like it's only going to keep getting faster and faster and faster. It's going to be we're going to see so many things before we're dead, man. It's going to be insane. And, yeah, uh, and even people that are like, like even like people that are sixty years old that I talk to, or even a little older, and they're like, "Oh man, I'm not going to see any of this, man. You're going to see so much." I mean, just think about what we did, Actually, what we saw in the last ten years. 
Yeah. No, we, the last 10 years have been crazy yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what we, what we see with technology alone, too, you know, not just insanity of the stuff, but, you know, technology. Yeah. I mean, when the fuck did the iPhone come out? Think about it. Yeah, I, actually, I was still in high school. Or no, no, I I was just out of high school when the first, like, the smartphones and the iPhones came out. And uh, I can't imagine being in high school now with a smartphone. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, man, for reals, man. I mean, so we used to sit on the PSP under the desk playing that. But like, if you had the internet in your pocket in school, I feel like school would just be gone. Oh, yes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, nobody's yeah. paying any attention. You're so much younger than me, right? Because, uh, yeah, you're like, I think you're like eight years younger than me or something like that, or seven years younger than me. So, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I grew up back in, uh, we, we, like, nobody had, uh, no, how about this? Nobody had cell phones, maybe like one or two kids in the whole school, but there was a few people with beepers. Yeah, you remember those? Yo, beepers, dude, yeah. Oh, I mean, I come, I'm from the beeper generation, bro. But, yeah, we had cell phones, the whole thing, you know? <clears throat> but, yeah, man, it's, uh, I remember, like, the first, uh, like, uh, kids that wanted to bring cell phones to, to school and, like, how that whole thing was, like, oh, should we let kids have cell phones in school? That's crazy, da 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 What do they need a cell phone for? Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and those, they were just, like, the flip phones, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have a razor, bro. I don't have my razor for me. <laughs> But yeah, brother. So yeah, I mean, you want to start wrapping this up, man? Uh, uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we tell us, tell, yeah, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Tell us where we can find you. Just give us your whole bio, your whole uh, everything. You know, go, 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 hand, go. Uh, yeah, wild, um, I go by Toya Harada. If you type that into like YouTube or BitChute, I should pop up. Even like whatever podcasting site you like. How do you and, spell uh, it, man? I, oh, it's T O Y O H A R A. Wait, what is it? H A R A D A. Ha. Um, Toy Harada is actually a comic book character. That that that's mostly probably what you'll find at first. But if you scroll down on YouTube, I do come up. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah. And then I basically just do a show right now. I'm trying to get more stuff into it. Um, but it's called I call it the War Never Changes, and um, I I just basically go over all sorts of different conflicts that are happening in the Middle East, and I try to keep it around a half hour. Sometimes it'll be like 20 minutes or 40 minutes, um, but it's like pretty much all the news of that day in terms of these different military conflicts, and uh, I put them out daily. And I'm trying to get to do other stuff. I, I just started this rhythm uh, maybe like two weeks ago. And uh, I'm trying to get like other things in there as well. I used to just focus on like Iran or Iraq in, in, in a video. And uh, I'm trying to get back to that to go more in depth with different things. But right now I do like kind of what is happening with the war never changes. So, yeah, I don't know if, if that's something you're interested in. Check that out. It's Toya Harada. And uh, again, I know not everybody's too interested in these forever wars. I know everybody wants to end them. But when it comes to like paying attention to like the day to day of all of them, I know that's kind of like a niche thing. But if you are somebody who is interested in that, um, I cover everything every single day. So, uh, yeah, just check that out. It's Toya Harada pretty much anywhere on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you said, man, as much as we want them to end, uh, we know fully well they're not ending anytime soon. So, right. Might as well. Yeah, I mean, on. yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's looking like it isn't going to wrap up, but I don't know. I'm like, I, I kind of, you know, I grew up watching Ron Paul and all that. And he always just said, like, there's going to be a day where we have no other choice. And uh, I feel like that day is, is coming sooner than later. Now, at this point, we're going to have no other choice but to just leave these areas. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I know what you're saying. I don't, I mean, the thing is that, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just don't see us leaving until we're forced out, you know, meaning either we lose some sort of military, uh, you know what I mean? Like some sort of military uh, conflict there. Or, uh, you know, we as a country, you know, meaning the dollar falls and, the, you know, all this stuff falls to the point where we can't pay the mercenaries, the army, ISIS, you know, whoever, you know, uh, anymore. And the whole thing just crumbles. I mean, basically, you know, we could talk, you know, we should talk about it next week as to why, you know, I think we're out there, why you think we're out there you know, what's going on out there because it's a major, major, major component to what's happening every day and every night. And it, it literally impacts us and it will be impacting us, you know, uh, moving forward in our lives and nobody, and I mean, nobody is talking about it except for you and um, and a few others out there, you know, um, but that's, I mean, you're the only one that I can, I know of that, that covers it all the time. And um, yeah, you know, there's just so many things. Again, we were gonna talk about, we just got off track, but we were talking about the fact that, you know, Turkey, 
you know, Turkey now is all of a sudden, uh, you know, they are a proxy army for the U.S. And now they're entering Syria on behalf of the U.S., you know, to, you know, go, you know, just keep, you know, trying to invade and take over. And, uh, and Russia's like, you know, like, hey, what the fuck are you doing here? It's like, and then we kick you guys out. But again, it's Turkey now, you know what I mean? But it's, uh, you know, kind of like yeah. being, being pushed. Well, by actually, the, the craziest thing about that is Turkey definitely has a better relationship with Russia at this point than they have with the United States. And uh, I mean, it's all just they're trying to prevent Assad from just taking the rest of his country back from these from Al Qaeda. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I mean, that's like that's just one of the examples of the massive messes that the reason that war has been going on for nine years is because of the United States and all of the different mm -hmm. foreign countries involving themselves. But, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, what do you think real quick? You know, I mean, we got time. I mean, fuck it. I mean, we're just going to end it because it was just getting, you know, but, uh, if we're going to, you know, might as well keep going, but yeah, real quick, you know, what do you think about that? Because I, uh, I thought uh, also as well that Turkey was, you know, the Erdogan, you know, was, you know, more closely, uh, you know, sided with Russia. So that's why when I saw that, I guess I just, didn't interpret or read it right or whatever the fuck or read it to in a hurry. But yeah, I was just reading it as like uh, the U.S. because it was U.N., right? The U.N., right? Or NATO or whatever the fuck that was uh, on, you know, the Turkey was on behalf of NATO. I mean, I don't know. Can we find that article? Might as well. Um, right? I mean, is that what it was? or no? that Turkey was going in to Syria on behalf of uh, right. NATO, Are right? They yeah they might have actually and they, they said it was over the refugees that Assad was creating as he was getting yeah. into Idlib Whatever. and they're like we can't take in any more refugees if Assad continues to try to get back this territory we're going to step in militarily but they might have done it like under the the like the guise or whatever of like being like a NATO coalition or something like that but uh, actually this what's happening now. The United States and Turkey were kind of coordinating and we're, we're talking about in the summer and then it just never really happened. But they were supposed to be doing like a joint operation like this. And that's why the United States was up in like that north sort of eastern region where the, like the Kurds are and, and all of that. That's why they were up there. And um, yeah, I don't know. Turkey, like Erdogan just keeps saying he wants to secure his border. That I know was like a huge thing. And um, and then he, he, he always talks about the refugees and because uh, they did, they, they took on like 3.6 million refugees, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't know. With the, with Assad, though, he's trying to just get the rest of his territory locked down under his rule. And um, I, I guess people are fleeing. I don't I mean, I honestly don't know the numbers. I've heard thousands, though. And um, that, that's why Erdogan came in there. But um, I don't know. I always say any country that is involved inside of Syria that is not Syria is just as responsible for the refugee crisis as Assad is. He can't be taking all the heat for that. If everybody just, you know, left them alone and have that little, you know, revolution when they tried to overthrow him, but they failed. Um, every country that went in and just continued to arm the rebels, they're the ones who created this problem because, you know, the, the coup attempt would have failed and then, you know, we would have been back to normal over there in Syria. I don't know. Yeah, but that's, that's not what we wanted. We wanted, uh, look, man, we wanted to take over Syria, very least destabilize the fucking region. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know. And actually, that has a lot to do with Assad's relationship with the RAN. They yeah, don't of course like they're they're boys and the United yeah. States doesn't like Oh yeah, that. because George Bush because, had be, been talking about Syria as well. Well, well I'm gonna tell you why. It's because again, going back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode, you know, with uh, the Rothschilds, it's because don't, they don't have Rothschild banks in Syria or Iran. So of yeah. course, you know, same as Venezuela. And actually it's it's funny too, because before like the, um, the the revolution in Iran, the the CIA was all over there. Israel had a great relationship with Iran. Everybody had a great relationship with Iran. And then the revolution happened, and then that's when all the problems happened, though. Right. And uh, I don't know. It is kind of it's kind of funny. Yeah. Especially when you just look at how Israel looks at Iran now. They they hate them. They want them on. They want them gone. And uh, that wasn't the case before the Iranian Revolution. Right. 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 Yeah. But it's just uh, you know how things are. I mean. Fuck, man. Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, that's, ba I mean, it's just um, the, the way I read it, you know what I mean? Or the way I saw it was just uh, that uh, now Turkey is, uh, you know, going to go in to Syria. Um, and again, you know, always looking for an excuse, you know, kind of like um, a Netanyahu always looking for an excuse to do what he does over there and, you know, and yada, yada, yada. So, 
Yeah, you know, I don't know. I saw that as like, fuck, you know, here we go again in Syria. And, um, you know, to me, like the whole Iran thing, I don't know. Maybe I think it's like nothing's going to happen until after the elections, you know, because, again, they're just trying to get in uh, reelected again. But, um, yeah, man, I think I mean, they, I think a lot going, of people I think are I, thinking that they're going in. They're going in. Because they're not going to go in into um, they're not going to go in to Venezuela or anything like that. And the thing is, look, I don't know, it's a little dicey, man, because, like, I was just re reading something the other day where, you know, like, uh, patrol ships, you know, um, like, American patrol ships are now um, complaining that, you know, they're having trouble navigating around the east coast of the U.S. because there's a bunch of Russian ships and, and a bunch of uh, Russian uh, yeah, subs. Yeah, submarines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it's not just there. They're all over the Caribbean. They're around Venezuela. They're surrounding Venezuela, you know, shit like that. Actually, because you know? the United States has an embargo, though, on Venezuela, like a quote-unquote embargo. Well, I yeah, don't... yeah, but, like, for example, when Venezuela needs to, like, uh, like ship something, you know, they use a military convoy, or by, a Russian military convoy, you know, among other things, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, right now, Russia is the only thing that's keeping the U.S. out. Yeah. I mean, you saw Actually, that thing. That thing I, I read... Oh, go ahead. oh I, I was reading though that the the russian submarines over there it isn't even like out of the ordinary for that to happen but the only reason they're really concerned about it like it could just be to to hype up russia as the enemy again and as like a throwback cold war enemy but also it like they i don't know it, it isn't out of the ordinary for them to be doing this though and and actually like all of these different things like the um, like you were saying, the embargo down in Venezuela and then what's going on with the RAN, like that could be why they might be seeing them more frequently. But I guess there's always Russian submarines around every country like that at some point. And um, I guess like the frequency is a little bit more now, but like it isn't really even anything to be alarmed about. And well, I guess the United States does the same thing to Russia and to all these other countries. Like, yeah. So like basically because, you know, I follow all kinds of people on YouTube and shit. So like this is one guy that talks about like uh, he keeps track of all these Navy ships. Right. And, uh, and one of he, those, those guys are crazy. Yeah. 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 But he used to, you know, this guy used to be a naval guy. Whatever. Anyway, so the point is, is that, yeah, basically, you know, you could see, you know, all the Russian ships. You know what I mean? There's a few Chinese ones as well. But basically, yeah, around the Caribbean, like, oh, around uh, everywhere. Um, and there's like two or three American ships. And then when you, but when you go to the other parts of the world, you know what I mean? When you go back to, you know, the, the China Sea, you know, over there in the, you know, the China Sea, there's a uh, contested and China. Yeah, there's a bunch of American ships over there and a bunch of American. American ships up, up in the Arctic and a bunch of Russian ships, you know, in the Arctic, you know, that's like the next frontier and, uh, you know, a bunch of shit like that. So, you know, they're everywhere, but it's just that, yeah, like to me, it's like, I think that um, I don't, I, I honestly think that the U.S. is not going to be doing too much to Mexico or Venezuela or, or Latin America, that, you know, militarily like that, because, you know, because, you know, there's so many Russian assets and other, you know, Chinese and other assets around here. Um, too close to home and, um, you know, picking on something like Iran, you know, is a lot more, um, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, for example, like the U S can attack Iran, but then Russia can't attack the U S you get what I'm saying? But like if, uh, the U S attacks Venezuela, the, then Russia can't attack. You get what I'm saying? Uh, just like right now, there's a proxy war between Russia and the U S and Syria and, in other parts, you know what I mean? So, and again, you know, right now they're just, you know, looking for a reason to make it a real one, but uh, no one's, you know what I mean? Like the only one that I think that, you know, like has any legs is like Iran, you know, basically because uh, the only one that would be stepping in there now would be China, basically, you know, it'd be China and Russia now trying to, you know, make sure that the U S doesn't get that piece of land asset, right? So close to fucking home there. You know, they're already, yeah. in, they're already well, in North Korea. They have so much money invested into Iran. That's like the other side of it all. Like most of, I, I believe most of Russia's oil comes yeah. from Iran yeah. and they actually stopped using the dollar over the whole sanction yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, they they definitely got um, you know ties with with China and Russia, and that's why I think everybody was so nervous when they carried out that airstrike yeah, or the the yeah. ballistic missile attack. I, I, I like, ran, oh my God, is it World War Three? No, no. I mean, Iran is fine. You know, what I mean, basically because look, one of the things that the embargo was going to fuck up is like they weren't going to have access to Google, they weren't going to have access to like a million things, and so you know. But all of a sudden, like overnight, it seemed like Iran was fine, and it was like, well, why? It's because well, you know, China just said, hey, don't worry about it. We got you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Russia well, was actually, like, hey, we got you. I, right? you know, I've been right? reading a bunch about how like Trump behind closed doors, it, it's coming <laughs> out that like he disagrees 
with everything that Pompeo and then Bolton, who's no longer with him, but like he's always kept this very hard line stance that he's not going to start a war with Iran. And then actually Bolton's idea was the maximum pressure campaign. And Pompeo like sold this idea to him too, but they, they were, they weren't being honest with them and they knew that Iran would never fold to the sanctions. So they said, Trump sanction them, they'll fold. And then, you know, then you could, we, you could accomplish whatever we're trying to do over there and, and we'll just do, do it through sanctions. So they sold them this idea, but in their heads, they knew that, that Iran was never going to fold and that this was the beginning of the path to go to war. And it was, I don't know, it, it was basically those saying that like there, there's been so many instances where Pompeo and Bolton, since the escalation over the sanctions, have been pushing Trump to war. And he really doesn't get that they're pulling the, the wool over his eyes in this whole situation here where where um, the, like the sanctions are never going to back down from. So now every escalation is building off of the sanctions. So like when they brought down that uh, drone that they had flying in the Iranian airspace, um, that that they were trying to get the United States to retaliate. And Trump just kept saying, no, we're not going to do it. And then he like he announced he called off the airstrike or whatever. That was never going to happen. Trump kept telling them that we are not going to retaliate. We're not going to attack them. And then like another thing was like the Saudi Aramco attack. Pompeo went right to Trump and Trump blew him off. And he says, you already know my answer. We're not going to attack Iran. And he blew him off that day. And then that's why Pompeo went off to Saudi Arabia with all of the, like the whole, oh, we got all this evidence. It points to Iran. It wasn't Iran. It was the Houthis. Um, but yeah, like all that different stuff, these guys are the ones who are guiding Trump to war. And it all started with the sanctions. And it's because they promised Trump that the sanctions would would make Iran bend. And uh, they, But they knew themselves that Iran was never going to bend to the sanctions. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And, and honestly, all of this has now changed, though, with that airstrike that killed Qasem Soleimani. Um, everything's out the window now because that was a crazy escalation. But even there, though, the the, uh, the White House has a back channel with Iran. It's a, it's in the Swiss embassy inside of Iran, and they sent them a coded message that said, don't escalate. If you stop after this attack, we will not retaliate. And um, that that's basically what happened. That night after the, the Iranians did that airstrike or the, that ballistic missile strike, they said it was over. We're not going to retaliate. And that's when Trump came out and said, like no one was harmed and everything like that. They actually hid all of the different um, casualties that had had taken place that day to not escalate. If that came out into the public, there would be a subsection calling for retaliation. And I believe that that's why the, the Trump administration hid the, those numbers, because right now it's like 200 and some. Or I'm sorry, it's like 104 um, casualties of that Iranian ballistic missile strike. And I think Trump hid that because he, if he put it out, they would call for war. And he's like really doing his best to avoid a war with Iran. So I don't know. I, I just thought that was interesting. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I agree with you. I really do think that he's trying to avoid the war. And, uh, and, these, and you know, all these war hawks, you know, all these people, you know, that they wanted a war a long time ago. And they don't, they don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they, to them, it's like, uh, man, they already know who's going to be, you know, they already, it's like, it's weird because it's like they don't even care who's in power, you know, meaning it's like, you know, they don't care if it's Trump or not or this or that, you know, everyone's yeah. the same. And Trump is, uh, you know, at the very least trying to like, uh, you know, do something. But again, at the same time, I also do think that uh, it could be part of the whole Cold War, you know I mean? The new Cold War that he's trying to just, uh, <clears throat> you know, do. It's just uh, not him, you know, but the, the, well, uh, actually, the agenda, you know? Even that, yeah, because because if you remember, Hillary Clinton said straight up that we would go to war with Iran if she won. And uh, that's, I mean, its own sort of problem. But then also, if you look at like all of the Russiagate stuff, it all came from the Democratic side. And that's like crazy warmongerish that I, I feel like people don't really understand how warmongerish they are when they're saying Russia's behind tampering with our election and Russia's behind, you know, that they targeted our power grid. That's what Rachel Maddow yeah, was yeah, saying. Yeah, and like, there's no proof of any of this right, stuff. Right, right. No, I mean, honestly, and, uh, I mean, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you want to say more? Oh, well, I, I don't know. Like, that is sort of the, the more establishment, at least more than Trump is. But that whole deep state thing, though, like, I always try to kind of push this across when I do my videos. It's just that, like, if Trump is really draining the deep state or he's draining the swamp, he's going to take out the deep state. Like, Mike Pompeo is pretty much as deep state as it gets. And same thing with, like, John Bolton 
and all of these different like neocon warmongers that he keeps around him. Like that's the deep state. That's who you're saying is targeting you. These are the people that are misleading you with all of this counsel that they're giving you. Um, that's why I feel like I don't think he has the ability or like, I don't think he has as much control over the situation as he thinks he does, or, or he might even just be oblivious to it. I don't know. I don't think that's the case. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know, but like he surrounds himself with deep state players right. and, and he's saying he's trying to take out the deep state. It's like, what are you talking about? man? No, right. And, it, and you know, and it's not just, uh, <clears throat> sorry, in the war chest, you know, but also, you know, and he surrounds himself with all these bankers and he surrounds himself with all these people that are not, um, you know, with the, with the, the interest of the American people at hand at all. And, um, so it's like, he's not draining the swamp, you know, not at all. <clears throat> Make, yeah. Making sure that, hold on. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> He's making sure that the agenda, you know, the, you know, everything stays as is, and uh, or you know, at least moving in the same direction. And honestly, like you know, from the economic perspective, I think their standpoint or whatever, you know, like I think that you know, right now um, they are seeing that the dollar is failing faster than they can control it. So maybe what they're doing is holding. They're hold, just doing a cold war, you know and holding off until the dollar actually does fall. And once it does, then we go into Iran, maybe World War Three, whatever the fuck. And, um, and then at the whole point, you know what I mean? Meaning that um, it will be an excuse, you know, to, you know, whether continue pumping our, our currency into oblivion, or if that's not possible, then create a new currency because we would be saying like, you know what? Fuck you all. You're not going to accept the dollar. You guys can suck our dick. You know, this, you know, it's not worth anything. Fine. We're going to burn it and we're just going to create our own dollar and use it for our own thing. And we're going to print this into oblivion to fucking uh, uh, create the greatest fucking army in the fucking world and go and destroy all you motherfuckers. You know, like Hitler did. And, um, and then that's it. I mean, you know, it's happened before a million times. You know, with the whole printing, you know, a new currency that just came out of nothing, you know, um, into existence just because the old currency was, you know, um, Kind of disappeared, and like Weimar, yeah. the Weimar Germany or other instances, you know. Um, so, and I think there's a you know the dangerous position that that you know a lot of people would be in, you know, if uh, something like that were to happen. But that could be, you know, what could be happening, you know, meaning that you know what I mean that we're just holding off, oh, like hold, hold, <laughs> you know. What I mean? hold, well, you honestly, know what I mean? the, yeah. like the the war economy, I don't think would work now because we've been at this war like no, this no, perpetual but it will war. No, no, it will be a new thing, meaning that our dollar you know by that point you know what i mean when we're gonna go into iran or whatever the fuck um would already be like almost cease to exist and so we would create a new dollar that only we would use and then it would kind of like start from zero but then hyperinflate you know how can like venezuela or you know zimbabwe you know they create a new currency and it just fucking hyperinflates in like a few years and then that's how we would uh be able to pay for the world war three which would be we're trying to go out with a bang but <laughs> you know what I mean? That would be yeah. that would be it because once we run out of money, we run out of money, and that's it. You know what I mean? And that, I mean, but yeah, I mean, that would be a disaster. <laughs> I no, hope yeah, that. But that, that but, I mean, that's basically the way I see it. You know, when I say that the country is going to be running itself into the ground, that's on the agenda. The bankers that run the show want it. You know, it's not up to yeah. the politicians that are in charge of the U.S. It's up to the bankers and to them. It's uh again, they're it's like the U.S. is a sponge and they're just they got to squeeze is it dry squeeze it squeeze it all the way to that there's nothing left and that would be going through this uh process whether yeah. it's that whether it's that or full-blown communism you know what i mean uh yeah whatever like and, and just concerning iran as well like they've been the enemy for a year like since 79 with with like the establishment of the the elatola and all of that like every administration since um what was it who was it reagan um they've targeted iran so like i i'd be impressed if trump could hold it off now because it feels like they're about to actually do it um but like you know the next one it, unless there's like a drastic change in the whole perspective and and perception of iran inside of the united states and, and the military and things like that um like if trump holds it off he could hold it off and that would be great but you know the next administration it would, would end up you know getting into that war like that that, that that is the direction that it's all headed in so yeah i don't know you are right about that 
me for sure, bro. You know, a lot of fucking pieces to this puzzle. But anyways, now, let's really wrap it up, okay? We're about to hit one hour and a half. And, uh, <coughs> you know, um, you know, if people want to hear longer, let us know in the comments. If this is a great time, let us know in the comments. If this is too long, let us know in the comments. And uh, we're just going to play it by ear. But uh, let, let us know in the comments anyway, you know, what you think, okay? Um, basically. And, uh, again, uh, you know, Toya, Toyo. How can we find you, brother? How can we find uh, you just one last time? Just one quick. Uh... <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm on uh, YouTube, BitChute, and, and all the podcasting sites. Just type in Toyo Harada, and I should come up. And then I'm on Twitter. It's at Harada underscore Toyo. It's the same thing, just backwards. And, uh, yeah, just check that out if you want to get, you know, the daily dose of everything that is happening with this global war on terror. Um, I do videos about it every single day. So, yeah, you can check me out there. Awesome, awesome. Okay, and then uh, as you guys already know, or maybe you don't know, um, I am Jose Ortega, and you can find me same way as you can find Toyo. You know, you can find me everywhere that you want to consume your internet, um, social media content, whether it's on YouTube. I have uh, two YouTube channels, okay? Uh, my guy Jose Ortega, which is uh, the one to cover this stuff on. But this uh, Jose Ortega channel is under attack. And so, therefore, that's why I'm doing podcasts. That's why I'm on BitChute as well. That's why I have another travel channel on the side and all kinds of stuff like that. Because um, this channel, the, um, the one, the YouTube channel that you're looking at right now is a little bit under attack. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, we're fighting censorship. You know, we're fighting uh, truth. You know, it is what it is. Um, but we enjoy what we do. And that's why we're, you know, again, you know, we're expanding our horizons, expanding your horizons. And, uh you know, we're just spreading, uh, you know, just knowledge, man. And uh, and hopefully uh, you enjoy this and uh, you can join us here, not just, um, you know, every week, but um, join us uh, all over the social medias. Again, um, not only do I have, uh, you know, this podcast every week with Toyo, um, but um, I also have, again, my YouTube channel where I upload videos all the time. I have my travel channel in which I upload all the time because I live in Mexico as an expat. And so I talk about all kinds of awesome things like immigrating here, getting married to my Mexican wife and uh, tours and, you know, all kinds of really cool, fun stuff, you know, bicycle rides, you know, whatever. Um, and so I had to put that in another channel just because, you know, my regular channel is under attack. And uh, my regular channel, again, I talk about Bitcoin, Julian Assange, living in Mexico, blunts, weed. <laughs> whatever um all kinds of really cool i go going to cuba traveling cooking you name it um and again on both channels and uh, um that's on youtube i'm on bit i'm on twitter i'm on instagram i'm definitely also now on anchor and all what anchor is is a uh, podcast thing but anyways literally anywhere you listen to your favorite podcast whether, whether it's apple podcast or <clears throat> google podcast or spotify or whatever all you got to do is just type in Jose Artega, J-O-S-E-A-R-T-E-A-G-A. -A -A. That's it. And then uh, I pop up and you can listen to me wherever, you know, type me into Googles. And um, I think that's it. <clears throat> that's enough, uh, uh, what you may call it, uh, uh, promotion. Plug-in? Plug-in time. No more plug-in time. But uh, speaking of plug-ins, I blew a fart and I got to go plug one in. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in. Anyways, guys. Thank you so much for joining us so much. You got any last words? Uh, no, yeah, just check me out and uh, have a good night. Take care, everybody. Or, or day. Maybe they're listening to this during, during the day, bro. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, hey, guys. All right, thank you so much for joining us. You already know what's up and where to find us. And, uh, you, you know, that's it. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll see you next uh, week. Or you can probably see us again later if you will listen to another podcast because <laughs> that's, you know, how cool this stuff is. All right, I'm going to turn this off because otherwise it's never going to end. Later. <laughs> See you.